So I've displayed here a census data set with a number of census tracks for the area around the Twin Cities. And I want to show you some things about symbology. So right now it comes up with the default as a single symbol, so the same color for all the symbols. But I can switch now to, um, uh, let's say, graduated colors. If I wanted to map values that are variable across a range, like population or population density per square kilometer, I can do that to show a range. Now, the default isn't so great. It gives you this nat natural breaks method using Jenks, and I could go to quantile or to a geometric interval, and that's a little better because it shows the range. Now, the reason it's a problem is I have some really high densities here, 15,000 people per square mile down to 100. 50, and that's a broad range to show. And so a geometric interval packs these together. Uh, and you can see that if you look at the histogram for the data. So if I right click and open the attribute table, and I see the attribute table here, and then if I right click on any one of these values, like the population density per square mile, and show the statistics, and then I make this so we can see it by pulling up you can see then that there's this long tail distribution. And so if it tries to break this up into equal values or there's no real natural breaks, you get a bunch of things that are all piled in to the low. So be, a lot of the color scheme will be across here because this um, stuff, this big one pulls stuff way out. So everything gets piled into this lower uh, color scheme. And so the geometric basically tries to go across that range a little bit better. I can do the same thing here when I um, use this quantile. The quantile basically uh, tries to get it across even sets, so it tries to put 20% or one-fifth of the polygons into, or into one value, one location, and so I can go to a little bit broader number here and it looks a little better. Now, Sometimes I want to get rid of things like the edges here around the symbol, so each of these are a solid color with an edge. And to do that, I can select them all. Basically, I'll uh, left-click and then hold the Shift key and left-click again here in this Label column. And then if I right-click on this Label column and go Format Symbols or any one of the other columns, I can turn off the color for the outline and apply it, and you can see that it makes the outline disappear. I can see then the differences a little better. Also, I might not like this specific color scheme, so I can left click and pick another one. And if I don't see one I like here, so for example, I might pick this one and say, nah, I don't like that. I can always format the color scheme myself. So again, closing this, I left click here on this drop down and go to format the color scheme. And I have this ability to change the color. So for example, I can select one of these and the color shows up here, one of these grab squares, and I can change that to a different color if I would like. And then I would get this color scheme across the range and I can say OK and it shows it and applies it now. That one's not so great. So I'm going to go back to one of these other ones as a starting point and format the color scheme and maybe do one here that goes from green to red. This is a commonly used one. And I'll say OK and you show then across the green to red. Now I can also uh, format the color scheme by adding as many of these little squares as I want. So I can go ahead and go to a location and then add another one and move these around. So I could really do an infinite kinds of color scheme by adding and changing the colors at these locations at will. And it gives me whatever color scheme I might want to generate. So a lot of the elevation color schemes you see are created this way. Now I'm not going to use that one. I'm going to leave the one I have here. So we also can change the labels here. If I want, I could go in and edit the label value. So you can see then that as I, if I don't want this less than to show up, it automatically changes it over here in my table of contents. And if I want to display a legend, it will show up that way also. What else can I do? Oh yeah, I can format the symbols. So I can go up here and click in this corner and then I can do the advanced 
and I can then format the label. So instead of showing four decimal places, I can only show two. I can show the thousand separators. I could um, change the number of significant digits. Instead of numeric, I can make the percentages or currency. Now these are just numeric, so I won't change those. I could go scientific notation. And then if I go back and see, then it automatically does that. See, so I went to two significant digits here. I'll go back then to advanced, and you'll see I'll go to um, one significant digit. So then that gets reflected here in the uh, table of contents and in the legend when I display things. So there's lots of ways to control the symbology here. Just these few things I've told you with only scratch the surface of the capabilities with an arc still allow you to create the symbology that's reflective of the things you want to show.